வணக்கம் அண்ட் ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் பேக் டு மை சேனல் ஐம் ஹேமா கோபால் அண்ட் டுடே ஐம் கோயிங் டு ஷேர் அபவுட் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி ஹைலி நர்வ் ஃப்ரேக்கிங் கெட் மிரேக்குலர்ஸ் இன்சிடென்ட் ஃப்ரம் தி ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் அவியேஷன் இண்டஸ்ட்ரி எஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டாக் அபவுட் அண்ட் ஏர்க்ராஃப்ட் விச் ஹெட் விச் ஹெட் ஆல் ஆஃப் இட்ஸ் ஃபார் இன்ஜின்ஸ் ஃபைட் ரைட் அபோ ஃபர் வாக் கேனோ ஸோ லெட்ஸ் பிகின் தி பிரிட்டிஷ் ஏர்வே ஃப்ளைட் நைன் சம்டைம்ஸ் ரிஃபர் டு பை இட்ஸ் கால் சைன்ஸ் ஸ்பீட் பட் நைன் or as the jagarta incident was a scheduled british airway flight from london heathrow to auckland with five stops in mumbai india kuala lumpur malaysia perth and melbourne australia on 24th june uh, 1982 the route was flown by the city of edinburgh a boeing 747-200 The aircraft flew into a cloud of volcanic acid thrown up by the eruption of Mount Galungong approximately 180 km from southeast of Jakarta, Indonesia, resulting in the failure of all four engines. The reason for the failure was not immediately apparent to the crew or the uh, air traffic control. The aircraft was diverted to Jakarta in the hope that enough engines could be restarted to allow it to land there. The crew members of the accident segment had boarded the aircraft in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, while many of the passengers had been aboard since the flight began in London. Shortly after 8.40 p.m. Jakarta time, above the Indian Ocean, south of Java, the flight crew consisting of 32-year-old senior first officer Roger Greaves, 40-year-old senior engineer officer Barry Townley Freeman, and 41-year-old Captain Eric Moody, who was heading to the lavatory, first noticed an unusual effect on the windscreen similar to the St. Elmo's fire. Despite the weather radar showing clear skies, the crew switched on the Uh, engine anti-ice and the passenger seat belt signs as precaution. As the flight progressed, smoke began to accumulate in the passenger's cabin of the aircraft. It was first assumed to be a secret smoke. However, it soon began to grow thicker and had an odor of sulfur. Passengers who had a view of the aircraft's engine through the window noted that they were unusually bright blue with lights shining forward through the fan blades and producing a stroboscopic effect. At approximately at 8.42 pm, the engine number 4 began surging and soon flamed out. The flight crew immediately performed the engine shutdown drill quickly cutting off fuel supply and arming the fire extinguishers less than a minute later at 8:43 engine number 2 surged and flamed out within seconds and almost simultaneously engine number 1 and 3 flamed out prompting the fl- flight engineer to exclaim that i don't believe it all four engines have failed Okay without uh, engine thrust a uh, Boeing 747 has a glide ratio of approximately 15 to 1 meaning it can glide forward 15 miles for every miles it drop the flight crew quickly determined that the aircraft uh, was capable of gliding for only 23 minutes and covering 91 nautical miles that is 169 kilometers from its flight level of 37000 feet At uh, 8.44 p.m., Griffiths declared an emergency to the local air traffic control authority stating that all four engines had failed. However, the Jakarta air control traffic misunderstood the message, interpreting the call as meaning that only engine number four had shut down. Only after a nearby Garuda Indonesian flight relayed the message to them, the air traffic control correctly understood the urgent message. Despite the crew squawking, the emergency transponder setting of 7700, air traffic control could not locate the 747 on their radar screens. Many passengers fearing for their lives wrote uh, last notes to their relatives. Owing to the high Indonesian mountains on the south coast of the highlands of Java, an altitude, uh, altitude of at least 11,500 feet, that is 3,500 meters, 
was required to cross the coast safely. The crew decided that if if the aircraft was unable to maintain altitude by the time they reached 12,000 feet, they would turn back out to the sea and attempt to ditch into the Indian Ocean. The crew began engine restart drills despite being well outside the recommended maximum engine in-flight start envelope altitude of 28,000 feet. The restart attempt failed. Despite the lack of time, Moody made an announcement to the passengers that has been described as a masterpiece of understatement. He stated as, Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We have a small problem. All four engines have stopped. We are doing our damnness to get them going again. I trust you are not in too much distress. Besides that, as pressure within the cabin fell, oxygen mask dropped from the shilling and automatic emergency measure to make up for the lack of air. On the flight deck, however, the co-pilot Grace's mask was broken. The delivery tube had detached from the rest of the mask. Then Captain Moody swiftly decided to descend uh, at 1,800 meters per minute to an altitude where there was enough pressure in the outside atmosphere to breathe almost normally. At 13,500 feet, the crew was approaching the altitude at which they would have to turn over the ocean and attempt a highly risking ditching. Although there were guidelines for the water landing procedure, no one had ever tried, in, uh, ever tried it in a Boeing 747. As they performed the engine restart procedure, engine number 4 finally started and at uh, 8 56 pm captain moody used uh, its power to reduce the rate of descent shortly thereafter engine number three restarted allowing him to climb slowly shortly after that engine one and two successfully restarted as well the crew subsequently requested and expedited an increase in the altitude to clear the high mountains of indonesia as the aircraft approached its target altitude, the St. Elmo's fire effect on the windscreen returned. Yes, the nightmare striked for the second time. Then Moody throttled back. However, engine number two and all the engines shut down. The crew immediately descended again and held 12,000 feet. Uh, feet. At flight, uh, as flight 9 approached Jakarta's Halim Padana Kusuma International Airport, the crew found it difficult to see anything through the windscreen and made the approach almost entire on instruments despite reports of good visibility. The crew decided to fly the instrument landing system. However, the vertical guideline system was inoperative, so they were forced to fly with only the lateral guidance as the first officer monitored the airport's distance measuring equipment. He then called out how highly they should be at the each DME step along the final approach to the runway, creating a virtual glide slope for them to follow. Modi described it as a bit like uh, negotiating one's way up a badger's hours. Although the runway lights could be made out through a small strip of the windscreen, the landing lights on the aircraft seemed to be inoperable. After landing, the flight crew found it impossible to taxi due to glare from the apron uh, floodlight which made the already sandblasted windscreen open. The crew received various Awards including the Queen's Commendation for Valuable Service in the Air for Captain Moody and medals from the British Airline Pilots Association. The flight also entered the Guinness Book of Record as the longest glide in a non purpose built aircraft. So that's the story of a Boeing 747 flight which has miraculously escaped from crashing into a volcano. I have many interesting videos in my channel, so please do subscribe and watch all my previous and upcoming vlogs and videos. I wish a very happy birthday for those who are celebrating birthday today. We'll see you in my next video. Until then, signing off Hema Gopal. Love you. Bye bye.